Okay, knitters, uh, let's face it. It happens to all of us on occasion. You find yourself feeling like this. Ah! Because you made a mistake in your work or you messed up reading your pattern and now you are facing the time and frustration of either tinking back one annoying stitch at a time or biting your nails and tearing back and desperately hoping you don't lose a stitch or two or three when you pick up all those live loops again. And of course, all this gets worse when you are working with tricky yarns, really fine yarns, dark colored yarns, or complex fabrics like lace or cables or whatnot. It's enough to make you want to... And possibly... There has to be a better way! Well, the good news is there is a better way. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, lifelines. In my humble opinion, lifelines are the best insurance policy you will ever have in your life. They cost almost nothing, there's almost no paperwork, and they save you a ton of time. Lifelines don't make mistakes less annoying, but they absolutely make your recovery time a lot shorter and easier. So for those of you who are sitting there asking, Shauna, what the heck is a lifeline? Lifelines are strands of yarn or thread run through a row of stitches that function as reset points in your project. And they also function as barriers to help keep drop stitches from being able to run very far away from you. They allow you to pull your needles out of your project, rip back, and pick up your stitches without worrying about losing any of them. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of how to run lifelines, and afterwards, I'll give you a couple of tips to help you save even more time and frustration. I'm going to show you how to put in a lifeline on my current project. This is an ideal project or an ideal candidate for lifelining because this is done out of a lace weight. I'm working this project out of this beautiful new lace weight we received at Grandma's recently, 80% Falkland wool, 20% mulberry silk. It's this silk that makes this an extra good candidate for needing lifelines because it's such a fine strand. Look how fine that fabric is. You can see cables. Really fine. Because of the silk and because of how fine this is and because it's cabled, which, you know, there's a lot of tension happening on some of these stitches. If you drop a stitch or two in this, oh, let me tell you folks, it is not a fun situation to be in. So lifelines can save you an awful lot of trouble. As it is, I'm making a size small in this pattern and there are 236 stitches around. So if even if I just make a simple mistake, tinking back in a cabled pattern in lace weight takes forever and is a bit of a nightmare. So lifelines are great because if I mess up bad enough, all I do is just frog back, rip back until I get to a lifeline and then pick those stitches back up and proceed forward again. It's actually a lot less trouble and fuss. Now, on something this fine, meet my favorite lifelining material. <laughs> Humble spool of dental floss. This stuff is wonderful. You can carry a ton of it in a very small space, and it even comes with its own cutter. Very convenient. So, lifelining. I like to measure out several inches. Oh, stuck. <laughs> past the total length of my project because we need some material at either end. Snip. Now there's, there's some other materials that can make lifelining even better insurance. Stitch markers. I like using something like this, something fixed at one end. And I simply tie two or three simple knots to make sure it's good and secure. Because most dental floss being waxed makes it slippery. But now, this is an end stopper. This keeps it from being able to pull out of a row. A locking stitch marker happens at the other end and I'll show you why locking stitch marker, something you can open and close, is important. Now, there's a couple of different options for running a lifeline through a row of stitches. One of the many reasons why I love using dental floss 
is that if you are using interchangeable sets with holes in them, for instance, like these chow goos that I'm so fond of, here's the tip and there's the cable. You can, hopefully you can see right here, there's the tiny little line that is the transition between the two. This little hole right here is what you put a locking key through that lets you get a really tight, smooth twist when you're putting these needles together for a project. That hole is great because you can stick this end of your lifeline through that little hole and then you do a row of your project. When you get to the end of that row, you just pull that back out and ta-da, you have run a lifeline through your project without having to do any extra work. Now, sometimes you forget, oh gosh, I needed to run a lifeline. You got so excited about doing the next row in your project and you're stuck and you can't do that or you're working with fixed tip needles or interchangeable needles that don't have that neat little hole that let you drag this through as you're doing your project. Handy dandy wool needle is option number one. We just get our lifeline through there and I like to leave a nice long tail. And what you do is you go along and you pass through each of the loops on your project, each, each of your stitches, and you carefully string your lifeline through each of the stitches. I like to do this in sections, and I like to do so on the cable of a circular needle. If you're a really tight knitter and you work on straights, this is going to be a little trickier. You just want to pay a lot of attention. You want to make sure as you're stringing your lifeline that you don't accidentally split your yarn. You want to make sure you're passing in between the two legs of each of these stitches. Now I'm going to finish stringing the rest of this for you guys really fast and we'll come back and I'll show you what to do with this guy at the other end. Okay. Here we are. There's my lifeline running through those stitches. Now here's another reason why I love using dental floss to lifeline with. As I'm going through and I'm knitting the next row, it is so much easier to do so without accidentally picking up my lifeline as I work along because that's something you want to watch out for. You want to make sure when you are working the stitches that you don't catch that lifeline strand. You want to leave it behind because this lifeline is your reset point. It's your insurance line. If you mess up, you want to be able to, you know, rip back and tear back until this, the line of stitches that has this lifeline running through it that you can then easily string back onto your needle and proceed forward with your project again. Now, let me show you why I like using a locking stitch marker at this end. I like using a locking stitch marker because I can do a slip knot at this end and put a locking stitch marker through it. Do that. Now, what happens is that I'm going to do another row and then the next row after that I'm going to put another lifeline through that row and then I'm going to do a row after that and then the following row so I just finished a let's see I'm getting ready to do I just finished a wrong side row here I'm getting ready to do another right side row 
and I'll do another wrong side row. And if that wrong side row is correct, I'll put a lifeline through that. And then I'll do another right side row. And if everything along there's worked out really well and it's correct, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back through and I'm going to pull this lifeline out and string it again farther up. That way I am leapfrogging a lifeline every third row through my project. When it comes time to move this line, our locking stitch marker with a slip knot around it over here, you just pull this out, pop your slip knot, pull this out, and get ready to restring it on another row farther up on your project. Now you can use this. You can use a dental floss on pretty much any project. I have used this on any weight of yarn for life lining. However, if you don't have this knocking around, if you don't want to use it, if you're working with thicker, heavier yarns, the only thing you have to make sure of with your lifelines is to make sure that one, it is a great deal smoother than what you were working with. I used to lifeline before I realized the amazingness that is lifelining with dental floss. I actually used to use embroidery floss because it's, it's smooth and it comes in nice sized little hanks and it's, well, it's really affordable. I mean, you can get these on sale for 30 or 40 cents a piece at, you know, any of the major craft stores or online or whatnot. But as long as whatever you are using is substantially thinner than the yarn you are working with and substantially smoother so that it doesn't adhere to what you are working with, it works. This is a smooth mercerized cotton. I have lifelined with that. This is leftover. This is a cotton viscose blend that's really silky smooth. And even though this is a heavy decay light worsted, if I am doing a project with an Aran weight, a chunky weight, a bulky weight, a super bulky, this would actually make really great lifeline material. So sometimes you can take things that are in your stash and repurpose them as lifeline material if you're not going to use them for something else. But in the end, Let's be really honest, a spool of dental floss is something that most people have room for in their craft bags and their craft kits. Yes, I'm one of those strange people. I even keep it in my purse, not because I'm an obsessive flosser, but yeah, I avoid things that make me grumpy when possible and stuff stuck in my teeth makes me grumpy. So yes, I even carry this in my purse. So I always have some with me. So let's talk a little bit more about lifelining. Now what happens if you've been working along on a project and suddenly find yourself in need of a lifeline and you haven't been doing so? All is not lost. With the exception of, you, of a few difficult fabrics, you can do what I call an afterthought lifeline. If you've heard of afterthought heels, afterthought toes, afterthought whatevers, well, there's afterthought lifelines as well. Uh, this is something you can use to rescue yourself from a mistake. I'm going to show you how to do this. Of course, this is a, a swatch I am currently making for a cardigan I've got in the works. And so I'm going to take my prepared lifeline here, something, you know, longer than my row. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want to place my lifeline. And what you're going to do to run a lifeline in existing fabric. So say there's a mistake, you know, in your fabric here, you need to run a lifeline below it so that you can rip back to that point. I'm going to pick a row and say I want to place it right here. What you want to do with your wool needle is you want to pick up either the right leg or the left leg of each stitch along in a row. I like to pick up the right legs. So I'm going to start with this row right here. I'm going to pick up this right leg of this edge stitch right there. And then I'm going to start picking up the right leg of each stitch along in the row. Take your time doing this. And we're going to take our lifeline once we've gotten through a little bit of the fabric. We're going to string it through there. We're going to pull that up and through. I keep running along here. 
I'm going to finish running this line and show you guys what it looks like to rip back to this line and restring your stitches. Okay, I've just strung a lifeline. If this is a lifeline I was just going to leave in the project for a while as insurance, then I'd go ahead and do my locking stitch marker trick at this end. But we're going to pretend that there's a mistake here and I need to take back to this point. By the way, for those of you who don't know, there's two different ways to take back. There's tinking, knit backwards, stitch by stitch, or you tear back or rip back, also called frogging. It's called frogging because you rip it, rip it, rip it. I know. Terrible, right? Pulling back. And you don't have to worry about losing stitches because there's our lifeline row. Ta-da! complete row of stitches, all secure, that we can now put back on our needle. You follow your lifeline through a loop, and being careful not to split and skewer your lifeline with your needle, is again one of the reasons why I love using dental floss. It's far harder to accidentally skewer good dental floss than it is some other strand of yarn or embroidery floss or whatever else you may use. Finish picking up this row be right back with you. One quick tip for you guys while I'm finishing up this row. If your stitches are on the tight side, you can pick up these stitches with a smaller needle and work your next row with the needle you're supposed to be working your project on. And that puts a lot less pull on tight stitches. There we go. Now we just grab hold of our fabric, grab hold of the lifeline, and out we go. That's how you add a lifeline after the fact and use it to reset to a point lower down your project. See what I mean? Lifelines are pretty cheap peace of mind, aren't they? If you don't have wool needles or the right stitch markers and no one near you sells them, links to a couple of places to purchase those and the wonder clips that I mentioned are all going to be in the show notes. Now, if you want to get even more benefit from doing lifelines, Having to redo work sucks, it really does. And while lifelines can help take a lot of the stress and time out of the situation, the last thing you want to do after having to hit that reset button is to burn more time on trying to figure out where are you in your pattern. You can amplify the benefits of lifelines by making simple notes on which rows you put your lifelines in so you can skip the counting, guessing, and hoping part. Even on complex fabrics like lace and cables, there are generally rows that are simpler than others, like a wrong side row on a lace shawl that consists of just purl stitches, while the right side rows have all sorts of yarn overs, make ones, SSKs, and so on. While you can run lifelines through those more complex rows, I recommend running them through the simpler rows if you can, simply because those rows are easier to pick back up if you have to rip back and reset. As part of your project prep, when you know you're going to have a project that you're going to lifeline with, or if you just get in the 
very, very good habit of lifelining in general, just to save yourself trouble with all of your projects. You can actually have pre-loaded lifelines ready to go. This is one that because of the size of the stitch marker that's on it, I saved this for heavier weight projects so that I don't have this big, heavy stitch marker knocking around the edge of a fine weight project. But it lives here in my little tchotchke box, my, my toolbox, and I keep the floss on there until I'm ready to go by using a little clippy. These are wonder clips. You can get them in a lot of places, sewing supplies mostly. Let's see, I have a nice, nice long stretch of dental floss here. And I've already used this for several projects. And when I'm done, just doo -doo -doo. Got it all wound up. Take our clip, clip it on there, and put that in my little box of tools, my box of goodies, ready and waiting to go into another project in the future. Yes, lifelines take a little extra time and forethought. And I'm like most people in that I am highly resistant to doing anything that adds time to a project unnecessarily. But in the end, you only have to ask yourself which will take more time. A little bit of time on lifelines or a lot of time tinking back or ripping back and hoping you don't lose stitches in the process. In some ways, it's like dealing with important computer files. There are people who back up their stuff and those who start doing so after a major loss. Lifelines are like file backups for your knitting projects. You hope you never need them, but you are incredibly happy to have them when something goes wrong. If you have been avoiding wading into deeper knitting waters because things like cables or lace or brioche intimidate you, I hope this tutorial gave you a little confidence boost because in the end, Every knitting project out there is just a process of little steps and lifelines can help you navigate those more complex patterns with a lot less stress and a lot more joy. I hope you give them a try and please share this video with other knitters in your community who could maybe use some stress reduction too. Follow me on Instagram to see what projects I'm currently working on, yarns I'm crushing on and any other shenanigans I might be up to. Take time to make things that make you happy and thanks for spending part of your day here on iHeartYarn. Yarn.